Mary Meet, Annie here. This video is in response to our dear chemical angel who asked us about our first tool. And I had a hard time remembering what my first tool that I actually got was. I remember that my first patent was a almost a pentagram shaped stone that I kept on my altar for many, many years. And I remember, of course, a wand, a found object that were from early on. And I was thinking, that's probably back as far as I remember. And what happened to me is in my 40s, early 40s actually, so for me we're coming up on 20 years ago, I was in a situation where I had been diagnosed with something and actually had been told I was not going to live for all that long. And don't go feeling sad or bad, and it wasn't as bad as an experience as it sounds actually. It was something that was easier to get through than you might think. If it ever happens again, I don't know if I'll feel the same way, but I got through it just fine. But I hadn't at 40 really given a lot of thought yet about my own ending. And I was without a coven at the time. I didn't really have any pagan brothers and sisters that I was close to. There just weren't, there wasn't anybody around when my, when my coven disbanded, which it did for all kinds of good reasons. Everybody left and moved away. <laughs> and it kind of left me bereft of their, that family, which had been my family. And I was very ill and not expected to make it. And I was with someone who, oh, I don't want to say this disrespectfully, but I loved him dearly. But I was quite concerned what would happen to my tools and my Book of Shadows if something happened to me. And I burned my Book of Shadows. So that is something that here and there over the years I have... I won't say I wished I hadn't done it, because we do things for a reason, but I certainly burnt my connection to my first pre priest and the teachings of my first circle. And I gave away all of my tools that were the kind of thing that could be identified as tools. I kept my knife, and I kept my chalice. Oh, speaking of chalice, that would probably be one of the older things I still have. And that is this. It's the first thing I ever had. I don't know if you can see it or not. Yes, I guess you can. It's the first thing I ever had that had a pentagram on it. Remember how brave it seemed at the time to be that about something. Now, this chalice has become so worn that I cannot really use it as a chalice at this point because the silver plating has come off over the years. And the, um, well, it, it's corroded, basically. The metal on the inside is corroding. So I actually don't use her anymore except symbolically. So I gave away everything but a couple of things to sisters in my coven that was disbanding. And my things went to all four corners of the United States as they moved away. And actually, I found great comfort in that. And it seemed right to do at the time. And when I eventually, <laughs> surprisingly, lived through the challenge and became relatively healthy post it, I found myself, oh, also single, so not dealing with someone in my life that, well, there was great love, there couldn't be great trust. Uh, I found myself kind of wishing I had things back. And over the years, because I remained in touch with the women who had moved away from that circle, some of my things came back to me. And one of the things that came back to me was something that was one of my original tools. And it's actually why I've been focusing on this stand which I used to put my book of shadows on for rituals and here it is and it is a turkey feather and was my original smudge stick you know we don't hear a lot when we hear about traditional wicca of smudge sticks as a tool but you have to figure out my first circles were oh circles of you know, the 70s, the 60s and the 70s, actually, and smudging and Native American traditions were really important to us. And let's see if I can get it where you can see it. There we go. In the mail to me today, one day, after I had been in conversation with some of my sisters from my circle that had disbanded about maybe I would rethink about whether I really liked the idea that I had given up some things that mattered an awful lot to me. She's the one who ended up with my smudging feather. And I opened something in the mail one day, and there it was. Now, it cannot be used for smudging at this point, because let's just say it is molting. 
<laughs> yeah, it's falling apart in bits and pieces. But I think you can imagine when this came back to me after all those years, how much I loved having it back in my life. It means a lot to me. Now the one I've been using, probably I guess I got this online, so it has to be within the last 10 years because I wouldn't have had things from online before that, is this one. And I got this, one of my favorite online sites, it's always been stormsong.org. And this is one of the smudge fans that Rogue makes. And this is the one I've used since then for moving incense around. So it is the one that I actually use nowadays, but this one here is the one that means an awful lot to me. And I love the opportunity to share this. I know that a lot of us wouldn't consider a smudge fan to be a tool. In the early days, very much in my circles, it was a, a symbol of air. And very often that feather as a smudge tool, as a feather, as the element, and representing the elemental of air, was on our altars. This fan, smudge fan, this feather, probably goes back to, I'm going to guess, somewhere in the 70s, middle to late 70s. So it has a right to be molting and unusable, <laughs> but I do like to hold it to meditate on air, and it does live on my altar sometimes when I want that representation there. So I thought that I would share that with you, and I'm so glad to have had the opportunity to share that story. I wish you mirth and reverence. Merry part.